This cover represents everything that Complex is about, kind of converging of two worlds, similar but different. And it's no coincidence you guys are both wearing your first Nike shoe. I want to ask, was it your own Silo or nothing? Because only a handful of people get their own silhouette. Great question. I respected the opportunity to work with Nike so much that I was willing not to have the opportunity if I couldn't honor it through my gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. And I went to Nike and I said, my gifts are not coloring up anything. My gift is in shape. And not only do I need my own silhouette, I need to fly my last in from Italy. It needs to be this shape. Mm -hmm. And Nike said, hey, like, we feel like kids just aren't wearing our performance shoes mm -hmm. during the day, straight up. How can we style this? I'm like, it's not a style thing, it's a shape thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I can come and fix the shape, and you guys have the best designers in the world that can help me do some style, but let's get the shape right kind of thing. That's why it took so long to happen. Yeah. It's been like two and a half, three years since we've been working on it. And I think everything is timing, man. Nike was in a, in a place where they were open, mm -hmm. you know? They were open to new ideas and they were open to new perspectives. And that opportunity pushed me to do what we did with Six Collection. It's like, what am I doing in my own world that is worthy of being able to put something like this and propose something like this to the world? And so it's just that living in this humility kind of that we talked about earlier. I get to walk on stage and play this song. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not, at the end of the day, it's not really about me. It's not what you are, it's what you get to do. What you get to do. That's the thing. John, in an earlier conversation, you brought up artists creating for themselves mm -hmm. versus what the world is asking them to create. Mm -hmm. How do both of you guys navigate that type of world? I feel like you build this balance of what you're taking in in terms of the overall attitude and then blending it with things that you're sort of finding on your own, mm -hmm. in your own time. So I think I'm always kind of stoking Two fires. One is what's the aggregate of what's going on in the world, and the other one is like, what could be a crazy next thing? You yeah. Know, what could be, what could be a curiosity that people haven't really discovered yet? For me, it's always been like solutions based. You know, I started making clothes because I couldn't find what I wanted on the shelf. I made records because I couldn't find what I wanted to hear. Yeah. You can, like John was saying, you stay in tune with what is happening, but more in tune with what's missing. Yeah, but know? fashion fashion has a different relationship with the audience than music does. I feel like f the audience for fashion understands they're gonna be challenged. They like looking at something they don't get yet. And I feel like in music, we, uh, the audience really responds to familiarity. And I remember thinking to myself like, well, if I was a fashion designer, you, you would have just eaten all of this stuff up because it's new. But I think because of the spiritual aspect of music being something based on a lot of experience and a lot of familiarity, you have to fight a little bit to, 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 to introduce something to people and go, no, trust me, no, trust me. I don't know, I would beg to disagree. Tell me. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I mean, you... I, I feel like fashion is like, you know, it's built on familiarity. It takes a high level of conviction and instinct to propose something new. and know that people aren't, aren't just gonna wow at it, but buy into it and purchase it. Okay, you, t you take two designs and they're exactly the same, and they're oversized and they're cut in a really slightly bizarre way. One of them says nothing and the other one says fear of God. Don't you feel like the audience would look at that, the thing that says fear of God and go, oh, that's pretty cool because they have an innate trust in you as a designer? Or do you feel like, you're starting out from scratch every time and you still have to play by the rules. Man, I feel like I'm starting from scratch every time. You know, I, even the sixth collection and the last time we put a collection out was over a year and a half. And I, I told my team, I said, if we don't put out sixth, I feel like we'll just fade, fade away in the wind. Like, I, I, I feel like the, the attention span of my audience is only so long. Mm -hmm. And I have to prove myself to that kid every single time. And the moment that I start to just put my name on something and think that the weight is in my name and not the idea, the proposition, then I'm, then I'm playing a different game. So you want to win the blind taste test every time. That's I want to like, knock you out every time. I love it. No, no decision. I love okay. it. I'm, I'm playing to knock you out. I love it. And if I don't knock you out, 
and you don't know that I beat you, right, right, then right. I, I didn't like, right. I didn't, I didn't put enough into it, you know? Amazing. You mentioned that we had to go away, and earlier you said you either get off the horse or you're thrown off the horse. Yeah. Why sometimes do you think you have to go away to come back stronger? Not everybody, in fact, I'll say nobody, can be a good pilot of their behavior and their creativity endlessly successfully. Hmm. You just can't. And I've even said to people, sort of came back into a pop world, and I said, I've said to people around me, I'm good for four or five more shots, and then I'm gonna hand it back to you. But I know that for the next three, four songs, I'm gonna nail it. But I've been through this before. You just can't be at the center of your own behavior as the creative director of all your thoughts without saying, I am gonna come to the end of a winning streak here, and you have to get off the field for a minute and take a break and watch the world go by. It's very difficult for people who are on social media now, and I'm not just gonna like beat up social media like a pinata, mm -hmm. it's too easy to do, but there are people who do not understand the, 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 the feeling of going away. It feels like dying. Yeah. And there's nobody to tell you to go away because the way your life is built now, you're the boss. And what you get now is this continual doubling down of everything. Mm. Oh, that worked twice as much now. Oh, that worked another twice as but much. But I think the double down is happening without the work. And I think you can keep winning if you keep taking yourself out of it. I sat in a house for seven months learning Grateful Dead songs. And that was arduous, and that was a little scary, and I put a record on hold, and so I was many songs in debt, and I was many dollars in debt, but I took like seven, eight months and sat and learned a hundred Grateful Dead songs, and my life since then, in terms of like return on investment, has been insanely beautiful. you guys quit two years Tuesday for me man oh for real yeah. both of you that's guys crazy, quit yeah. drinking I'm, how how do I'm three years in November good for you how yeah, is that that's crazy two in the next Tuesday what an effect has that had on both you guys you both quit <laughs> yeah professionally and personally um, I mean my family life's better my work life's better I'm able to focus but I don't condemn it I don't think there's anything wrong with it you know I just think that um, some people can handle it and some people can't. It's the most personal thing to people. It is, and I know it's one of the most personal things to people because try talking to someone else about drinking. Try talking to someone else about how you haven't had a drink for, for two years and watch what happens to them. Instant well, I don't, I don't drink that much anyway. I don't drink that much. And when, if I were to tell other people how they could do it, it just, is so particular to your own spirit and your own psychology that it's almost impossible to develop one way of explaining it to someone else. You have to fight really hard to look at it from a critical point of view because it's constantly pushed on you. Every Friday and Saturday on social media, there is enabling going on for drinking. When your friend blacks out, if he dies, he dies. And me saying I won't have another drink, 10 minutes later. Caption, <laughs> captions, yeah. Um, what if I woke up every morning on Friday, and sa uh, Saturday and Sunday, and put my feet on the ground and I just went, not hungover, mm -hmm. and put it on social media every day, you know? Hmm. Like, that would be an influence to people because I think you forget that's an option. And if you look at drinking the way you would look at anything else, which is risk, reward, what am I giving up, what am I getting? It's some of the worst odds right. that yeah. ever existed. Yeah, and I, and all, I just looked at it time. like, <laughs> I had one night where Especially I Especially when you get deep. older. Yeah, man, I just went deep one night. I remember being like, hey, what happens if I keep going? And it wasn't like dark, it wasn't sinister. I went, I always stop here. Mm -hmm. what, if I, what if I keep going? It was really kind of like a oddly, like playful kind of a thing. And then I went, oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm done. And I, did you go though? Did you keep going? Listen, did I have you? the most amazing last night of my life drinking story. And it was Drake's 30th birthday party and I made up quite a fool of myself. Really? Oh, and, I, and it took me weeks to stop doing this every morning I woke up. And, uh, and then I had a conversation with myself. And I remember where I was. It was like six days into the hangover. I was in my sixth day of the hangover. That's how big the hangover was. I looked out the window and I went, okay, John, 
what percentage of your potential would you like to have? Because if you say you'd like 60 and you'd like to spend the other 40% having fun, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But but what what percentage of what what is available to you would you like to make happen? And there's no wrong answer. What is it? And I went, 100. I want it, I want it all. I said 100. I want it all. And, and I, then yeah. the voice in my head said, okay, do you know what that means? And I went, we don't have to talk anymore. I get it. Let's go. And that next year, I did four tours. I wow. was in two bands. Yep. I was happy on airplanes. So what happens when you stop drinking? The level goes, it feels like boredom at first, but if you stick with it, the line goes, the line straightens out and it goes kind of low, right? You're like, oh, I'm not having these high highs. But if you work, you can bring the whole line up. Wow. Do you know what I mean? I mm -hmm. went to one AA meeting and it was like, hey, my name is Jerry and I'm an alcoholic. And I hated saying it. And that was the last meeting I went to. Wow. You know, just because I didn't want to confess that over my life, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So my, my way to quit wasn't by going to meetings. I was still labeled to quit, you know, three years next month. But like you said, it's a personal thing. We're at this sweet spot of concentrating on being better than most people at the thing that we do and just appreciating the act of that and being like, I'm still young enough to do it. If you're, you get old enough to have the wisdom to know how to do it correctly and young enough to still have the years to get it done, you have so many collections before someone tells you to take a seat. You have so many collections. I have so many more records. I just figured out how to make them without going you know crazy. What? It just, I just think about Jay-Z, you know, young enough to buy the right car, old enough not to put rims on it, That's to right. know not to put rims That's on right. it. And I feel like I'm in that space and I feel like you're in that Yo, space. I go till the doctor is gonna tell me bad news. Yeah. And, and I swear to you, until that day, I've got it figured out and this is the most fun. Every morning I wake up, I go, I get another one of these. And most people figure that out much later on in life. Not drinking has a lot to do with plugging into that a little earlier than other people, but I go like, I still get to ride the ride. Yeah. You know, and, and that's why when people we love pass away, we go like, oh, you can't stay on the ride. Mm -hmm. Like when Mac Miller passed away, my right. first thought was, you don't get to stay here. You bring up Mac and you played on Small Worlds. Yeah. And you said that you didn't expect to be on his album. Well, I didn't expect to play on his album. Right. He said, come over and, and listen to stuff. And here's a true story. Like, I started talking to my manager about like, well, you know, we gotta talk about splits and we gotta talk about, I gotta mm -hmm. start making a living playing on other people's stuff. Because for years it would be like a really fun side note, you know? And I went, okay, so from now on, I'll go and listen to people's records. I would say that's my, my manager. I'll go and listen to people's records and then I'll, I won't play on them. And then I'll tell you that there's something I want to play on and you can call their manager and we can work out the split. And I got to Mac's house and he played me this thing he had just worked on that morning. And I went, give me a guitar. I'm in. Yeah. And he, I think something to do with him having worked on it that day, it was still wide open and fresh. And, and there's a lot of songs I hear people play for me and I go, man, I wish I was on this song, but it's done. Mm -hmm. And I picked up a guitar and I went boom, boom. The boom, bop, boom, bop. And we had such a great time and laughed and and I said to him, no cash, no credit. I said, I'm just happy to do it, man. That's awesome. And, I, and he said, hey, can I, I said, don't, I don't want people talking about me, I want people talking about your record, you know? And um, I just wish it wasn't fatal. Right. I just wish figuring out your life didn't take your life away from you. And, and I, I don't have an answer for how to fix that, but it, once you get old enough to understand how valuable life is, you look at people and you go, I just wish you could work this out. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a constant, like, by no means, like our, our brand is in a better place and uh, my marriage is in a better place. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I told my wife, like, this is the most unhappiest year of my life because of how hard it was for me to detach and put everything into this collection and put everything into this Nike collection and to uh, hit rock bottom and hit, hit a low place where I, where I knew only God could take me mm -hmm. to the finish line. And yeah, I'm super happy with the end result, but I don't know that I would, that I did it the, the best way. It's like a constant, yeah. like, how do I... Creating things, <laughs> creating great things is like, having a restaurant with the messiest kitchen that would get shut down if anybody from the health board had walked in. They'd go, you get an F. Your kitchen gets an F. 
but walking out into the actual restaurant beautiful. floor with the most beautiful, dainty, delicate <laughs> little dish that's so delicious. And you just know that if anybody ever looked behind the double swinging Forget doors, they it. would see pure rat infested rat chaos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> rat ratatouille. Do it when it's it's always messy, yeah. man. You said rock bottom, but it was on a project that may be one of the biggest that you'll ever do. So you're working on a Nike collaboration where you're creating your own silhouette, and it's rock bottom. How does that happen? Is it the pressure? of making it great, or is it other things that happen? Yeah, I think it's the pressure. My wife will tell you this Saturday when we were, I was shoveling dirt on the campaign, I just had to leave set. And I was like, man, I th you may have to take me to the hospital. I, I don't know where we should go right now, but I, I can't be on set anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just like, I had given every, even styling the looks, the following two days seemed like such a, a big task. Mm -hmm. And I had just, put everything into it, you know, and I, and I didn't feed myself. And I, as much as I thought I was putting God first and mixing him into and mm -hmm. um, trying to balance work and family, I was just so depleted, you know, so depleted. And I don't want to have to get depleted to do what I think is like great. You know what I mean? I don't want to have to be empty. Mm -hmm. You know, I need to find a new rhythm to be able to give to something without, you know, taking so much away from myself. And so maybe, you know, getting a sneaker, like I said, it's like, maybe I honored it too much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When I got the chance to work with Nike, like I, I'm by no means will we ever be Jordan or be mm -hmm. the next Jordan, but like, that's, that's where I go. You know what I mean? If mm -hmm. I can't try and do something like that, then why am I even playing the game? And I grew up, we're the same age. It wasn't about like sneaker drops when I was growing up. It was either Jordans or nothing. That's right. Yeah. It, it wasn't was the about best. Mm -hmm. And it was the emotion you got when you felt that thing. It was like a car. Joe. Yeah. yeah. It was like a car. You get a Jordan 5, and it was like getting a new car. Imagine designing and creating, chasing that emotion. Mm -hmm. It's I'm pressure, though. I'm chasing it's pressure. that. When, it, when the kid sees this, Whatever he felt when we hopped out of the car, whatever, at the end of the campaign video, like, I want you to feel something that I felt when I was, you know, in eighth grade, mm -hmm. in ninth grade. And so the pressure of that emotion that you're chasing can be heavy. Yep. It is a fairly new idea looking into the possibility of a creator also having some mental well-being. Obviously what this is pointing to, and not to grab headlines, but you think we see behavior of some of the biggest creators of our generation, people who you've both worked with, mm -hmm. Kanye, and you see what's happening and what you're describing and I think what you're getting to, especially in 2018, we see people going off the rails from you know, on social media, and, and we don't know what's actually going on. Do you guys sympathize? That's a great question, and that's a really great word, sympathize. Yeah, I sympathize. I look at it very differently, though. What happens when you decide to be, to, it, when, when you decide to make an invention of yourself? You know, artists have always been inventions, right? So we decide, oh, I think I'm gonna be that. I think mm -hmm. I'm gonna be that. Some people go, I think I'm gonna make all of this that. I think I'm gonna move all of my chips into the idea of this living invention. Mm -hmm. And you can lose yourself in the invention. So I, I don't even begin to look at this like crazy or off the rails. And, and because it's not, I, I, don't, I don't really have the data to be able, I don't think anybody really does. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you for sure that a component of it is being at your own steering wheel for so many years as a creative god and not knowing how to say, well, now I'm a guy. And I was always astounded by Kanye's ability to donate most of who he is mm -hmm. to that invention. The problem is I have never seen anybody successfully live inside of the giant robot that you've built mm. for many, many years. I just feel like I agreed with the universe when I first met Kanye that I was never gonna just 
beat on the guy mm -hmm. because I saw a genius, and, and I think a lot of people have. But it just goes to show you that even if you are a genius, you're still just a dude inside of the bigger metallic version of yourself going, what does this button do? And yeah. if you don't check in with someone else to tell you, maybe, maybe step down from that, you just burn into it. Ultimately what he's saying is the same thing every artist wants to say, which is to break free of expectation, to break free of, and this art has been doing this for hundreds of years, you know. It's like responding to the world, yeah. finding out what in the world is hypocritical, what in the world is confining you. Mm -hmm. And I think he's breaking, he's trying to break through these walls, but, and everybody has a different way of doing that, and he just invented a larger Hulk smash of it all. Yes and also didn't build in a fail safe, which is someone throwing you in a car and saying, get out of here. Hmm. If you don't have a boss to tell you. And that's what you hear. You hear, you, you hear the words yes men thrown around. Yo, I would love to be sitting here and say, I have nothing to say about Kanye because he's somewhere treating himself or he's somewhere being okay. Like Jerry says, he's somewhere going away. But to talk about Kanye, I'm not gonna shy away from the Kanye conversation because it's like an MMA fight where the guy's not tapping out yeah. and his ref isn't calling the fight. So he's still a topic of conversation and I cannot wait till the day it would be insensitive to talk about him. I can't mm -hmm. wait, please do us the favor of making it seem a little unsavory and a little tacky to talk about it because mm -hmm. you tapped out. Please tap out, I tapped out. I hear you. I tapped out, tap out. You know, mm -hmm. instead of the refs going, I don't know what to do. He's still fighting. He's still, he's still punching back. You know. Right. And I think the thing of like, yes, man. I think is to devalue his own self worth, and I don't think he needs another man to tell him what he needs mm -hmm. to do. And I think, and kind of like what John was saying is, I'm, I'm too close to it to have an opinion mm -hmm. as well. And so I'm looking at it, in, in the backyard also, and I'm saying, wow, if the world can look at this with so much forgiveness and so much grace and can continue to forgive and try and find an understanding of what he's saying and they won't do that for the, for the normal people in their life, for their friends and mm -hmm. for other people that they live with daily but they're giving this idol this level of grace and mercy, wow, why don't we just treat the rest of the world like that mm -hmm. and see how much That's better. That's a great point. We are all Kanye apologists. <laughs> to an extent that we do not offer to anyone in our personal life. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's nobody yeah. who gets as many chances in our own personal life, which is really interesting. But, but that's a larger conversation, right? We used to give our respect to people and our admiration to people on a provisional basis. Mm -hmm. Meaning, it can be taken away if you behave a certain way. And we see now that, you know, it's, it's no secret, there, there's a president that can do no wrong by those who have decided he's their guy. Totally. Kanye can do no wrong if you've decided he's your guy. You'll just change the qualifications because it is very unpleasant to scrub someone off your list. It's very unpleasant to say, I was wrong or I changed my mind or not anymore. What if what he's really saying is, I want you to free think so bad that I'm gonna do what it takes for you not to like me so that you can begin to make your nah, own decisions. Nah. Free, free thinking and free, free thinking an excuse though. Yeah, well, okay, so so free I'm thinking just, I'm just if, what if I'm gonna self sacrifice okay. you liking me nah, 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 so nah. that you what I'm just let's go into free thinking because it's a brilliant conversation, right? Free thinking does not mean lazy thinking. It doesn't mean you can, you're, for, your, for your college essay, you can take a piss on a sheet of paper and say, I decided not to go with words for this essay. There is a way to cooperate with the world so that free thinking, and this does actually funnel into your collection, right? Because you have this great combination of free thinking and discipline. You didn't put out three shoes in a box. There's still two shoes. To hear Kanye say it, why stop at two shoes? Why not four shoes in a box? So free thinking, by his definition, is anything other than what we're talking about. Free thinking does really mean a thoughtful intellectualizing of the things just right outside what we're talking about. So to say that time has no definition is to basically opt out of cooperating in an intellectual world where we have to agree that time is a thing so we can talk about what kind of time we want to have. So free thinking doesn't just mean freedom from thinking. 
It's it, the discipline. It's that. A, there's a discipline in abstraction. You have this perfectly. I look at your collection and I go, that is one of the most disciplined collections of of taking something that's slightly contrarian. The way that the jackets fit are the first time that I've seen someone take this rethinking of the geometry of a jacket and still keeping the cool of a leather jacket. A couple weeks ago, we had our first call together mm -hmm. and you're talking about new record and you said your next single addresses the emotional elephant in the room. Yeah. I talked to you when I knew that I had the song that I was gonna write and I hadn't written it yet. And I went home like a week later and wrote it in 48 hours and I just thought about it. I, I knew I had one. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while you come across a song, you're like, oh, this skeleton is so good. Mm -hmm. People have a great amount of emotion and a great amount of sensitivity that they're just now coming to learn they have to feed or else they'll get sick and they'll get sad and they'll get hurt and they'll get lost. As I got to the end of my second month without finishing a song, going in the studio every day, I went, what's going on? What am I best at? Mm -hmm. Not just what am I good at? See, when you get to your 40s, you're like, what am I best at? Because I'm not gonna have all the time in the world to do everything I'm good at. And that meant giving up a little bit of this idea of me being at the top of the radio charts, you know, or constantly putting out stuff that everybody's 15-year-old daughter was gonna love. You okay. know? And the new light's been great, mm -hmm. and, it, and it certainly hasn't been an example of, of it not working. It's worked, but just me being in the studio and listening back to stuff, I'm going like, do I buy that? I don't know. It wasn't making me happy. Mm -hmm. Like, I wasn't loving what I was hearing. And then I had this moment where I was like, put the MPC away for a minute, bring out a tape machine, acoustic guitar. What do you do? Mm -hmm. You make log cabins. That's what you do. And so then I sat down and I wrote a song, and it's called I Guess I Just Feel Like. And it's this really honest confrontation with how it feels. I guess I just feel like mm -hmm. good things are gone. I guess I just feel like nobody's honest and nobody's true and everyone's lying just to make it through. And I guess I just feel like I'm the same way too. And there's no politic in it and there's no, there's nothing you could listen to to go, wait, hey, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm trying now to just do what I always did, which is just like go to the heart of something. You are on tour with Dave Chappelle mm -hmm. and you're making you're outfitting Black Panther and Kendrick Lamar. Do you think convergence culture is at an all-time high? Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of Black Panther, it was just like I feel like this Nike is like, I feel like it's the Black Panther of the culture. It's like Disney gives all these resources to Ryan Coogler and says, hey, come and write and direct this film. And now you have somebody that understands culture with resources. Now that level of the way that movie reaches culture is at a different mm -hmm. level. It's like Virgil going to Louis Vuitton, that you have someone that understands culture now with resources to speak to culture. It's a different thing. And I feel like me going to Nike and having the opportunity to create a performance basketball shoe yeah. was saying, hey, I'm going to make something that doesn't compromise. You're going to be able to go to the club in that it's... <laughs> and dunk on somebody mm -hmm. and both at the highest level. Why does it have to compromise? We, we are, I feel like, in a meritocracy right mm -hmm. now where, where people are, are not necessarily judging what they do on the genre like they used to. Because you'd be like the most outdated human being in the world if you were like, I like rap and I like yes. R&B. Like, what do you, yeah. that is a weird, that's like saying I like blue clothes. <laughs> like, what a weird way to judge things, you know? And I think that's what we're trying to do, you know, yeah. with fashion. Yeah. I need to know how the Drake story ended on the third. third, third. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, you if know, you'll share it. Oh yeah, man. That's funny. I was doing a show with Dave Chappelle. Okay. And Drake was in the audience. Drake came up, we said hello, and I hadn't seen him since his birthday. Mm -hmm. And he reminded me, well, he didn't really remind me. He told me for the first time, because I was pretty far gone on right. this last night I'd ever had a drink, that when I said goodbye to him, and was about to leave 
the club and go into the street. I put my arms out in front of him and I said, remember me and remember this. <laughs> and just walked out. And apparently it was like, what did he just say? It's <laughs> amazing. The crowd laughed. And I was like, that's pretty, Chappelle lost it that I would have said that. And I have confirmation from someone else standing next to him that ultimately I wasn't so bad that night. I found out that I wasn't, so wasn't as that bad as I thought. That doesn't sound that bad. I didn't, I apparently held it mostly together. But the idea of um, looking at Drake and going, remember me remember and remember this. this. I just turned around and, and got into a car and drove away. And then after that I woke up and cried into the neckline of my sweatshirt the next morning and went, all right, I'm gonna remember this for sure. <laughs> we will remember <laughs> I'm gonna remember that guy for sure. I was yeah. probably saying it to myself, you know? So remember me and remember this. There you go, there's, there's meme food for you. Well, I can't thank both you guys enough. Congratulations on everything. It's going to be big year for both of you guys. And this is it, the complex cover.